The local government of Britain's capital is divided between the Greater London Council, 32 boroughs, and the City of London. Here in the City of London is the capital's historic centre, and for this reason, it has many duties and powers not shared by other London boroughs. By about 200 AD, London had become a trading centre, depending on the River Thames as a routeway. From that time until the Middle Ages, the city was enclosed by a wall. A few settlements developed outside, but today it still only occupies approximately one square mile. However, it is a very valuable and important area, for it is the financial capital of Britain, and it is from this nucleus that Greater London developed. On the evening of the second day of the state visit, His Majesty King Khaled was invited to attend a banquet at one of the most historic buildings in the City of London, the Guild Hall. The Guild Hall is the home of the City Corporation and dates from the 15th century. The Great Fire of London in 1666 did much damage, but the building was restored, only to be severely damaged again during the Second World War. It was restored again in 1954 and further sections remodelled in 1972. The first Mayor of London was installed at the Guild Hall over eight centuries ago. The Lord Mayor this year is Colonel Sir Roland Gardner Thorpe, and he was the host for the evening, acting as representative of the whole nation. The Lord Mayor is elected to office each year, and such an event as hosting a banquet on the occasion of His Majesty King Khaled's state visit to Britain would be one of the main highlights of the year. No other modern-day ruler has made the great strides, both socially and economically, that King Khaled has achieved. Harmonious cooperation with Britain has played some part in that process. For the Lord Mayor of London, it is a source of great pride that the institutions, banks and businesses within the City of London have been able to take part in Saudi Arabia's thriving economic development. Finally, the moment everyone had waited for, His Majesty King Khaled bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud in procession with the dignitaries of the City of London. Before the banquet, an address of welcome would be given to His Majesty King Khaled in the old library. The original library was founded in medieval times and is now housed in a modern building. The old library building, however, was built in 1870 and since 1974 it has been used for ceremonial purposes.
Court of Common Council takes place to verify the proceedings have the official stamp. The members are gowned, the Lord Mayor, Aldermen and Sheriffs wearing scarlet, and the Common Councillors in blue. The recorder then reads the address of welcome to His Majesty King Khaled. May it please Your Majesty, we, the Lord Mayor, Aldermen and Commons of the City of London in Common Council assembled, offer to Your Majesty our warmest greetings on the occasion of your most welcome visit to this country as the guest of our beloved Queen. The resolution of the Court of Common Council is given in a silver casket to His Majesty King Khaled. <laughs> For the City of London, King Khaled is a particularly important guest. The city is the financial and business centre of the capital, and it is within that two and a half square kilometres that so much business with Saudi Arabia begins. Last year, Saudi Arabia was the 11th largest market for British goods worldwide, and it was the largest market by far among the Arab states. Saudi Arabia provides the biggest field of business operations for British firms in the Arab world, including the setting up of many joint ventures between British and Saudi companies for carrying out industrial projects. British companies also operate in other commercial and service activities, such as consultancy. The United Kingdom is also the sixth largest customer for Saudi crude oil. His Majesty King Khaled and the Royal Arabian Delegation leave the old library and go in procession to the upper art gallery and then to the Great Hall. At the banquet, the Lord Mayor would address a speech to the assembled and a reply would be given by His Majesty King Khaled. As His Majesty King Khaled entered the Great Hall, the guests welcomed him with the official handclap of the City of London.
Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellencies, my Lords, Aldermen, Sheriffs, Ladies and Gentlemen, pray silence for the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellencies, my Lords, Aldermen, Sheriffs, Ladies and Gentlemen, in the year 1878, Charles Montague Doughty, the English writer and greatest of all Arabian travellers, emerged at Jeddah, having spent 21 months exploring the lonely beauty of the Arabian hinterland that had cast its magic spell over him. In the matter of religion, sir, we here recognize the important connections between Muslims in the United Kingdom and Saudi Arabia. For each year, many of the one and a half million Muslims that are resident here make the pilgrimage to the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. Since the establishment of the modern kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we in Great Britain have watched your country's progress with interest and admiration. In the decade from 1970 to 1980, covered by the first two five-year plans, you have introduced a comprehensive infrastructure of roads, airports, ports, schools and hospitals that has captured the imagination of the world. And Lord Mayor, Your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellencies, my Lords, Aldermen, Sheriffs, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for His Majesty King Khalid of Saudi Arabia. the compassionate. Lord Mayor, Your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellences, Lords, Aldermen, Ladies and Gentlemen, I would like to express my gratitude for the words of welcome you have just delivered. It gave me great pleasure to note the comparison made in your valuable speech between the conditions of the Arabian Peninsula in the year 1878 and the present day. The difference is great indeed. This undoubtedly has been the outcome of long and patient endurance and the result of our desire to reconcile the hard desert nature of our country with the means of modern civilization while preserving at the same time our spiritual values and inherited traditions. No doubt the progress accomplished by my country is due to God's guidance and to the collective efforts including those of a number of friendly nations among which Great Britain stands at the forefront. The King went on to express his awareness of the varied importance of the City of London. He spoke of the equal consciousness by the inhabitants of the importance of the Arab people, further enhancing the excellent relations between the Arabs and the British people. A visit to England would not have been complete without a trip to the National Stud at Newmarket, the breeding centre for Britain's best racehorses. The impeccable stables house four prize stallions. Bloodstock sales bring in about 30 million pounds a year, one third of which is in foreign currency.
The National Stud is based at Bunbury Farm and was built between 1964 and 1967. There are 190 mare and foal stables, 20 foaling stables and 6 stallion stables. The farm is bordered on two sides by the Beacon Course and the July Course of the famous Newmarket Racecourse. Here on Newmarket Heath, young racehorses are trained. It's a common sight, for Newmarket is a town whose prosperity and development are based on the racehorse. On the third day of the state visit of His Majesty King Khaled bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, a short outing to the National Stud. It was to provide an element of relaxation amongst an otherwise busy schedule of meetings, receptions and banquets. The National Stud at Newmarket owes much to the Arabian Peninsula. All registered thoroughbreds in Great Britain can trace their ancestry back to Arab stallions imported over 200 years ago. They were brought over to improve the stock, which has made thoroughbreds the fastest breed. On arrival at the National Stud, His Majesty King Khaled was introduced to Mr. Michael Bramwell, Director of the National Stud, and the Assistant Director, Mr. Robert Acton. Newmarket is about a hundred kilometers from London, and because it was so windy on June the 11th, the journey was made by car and not by helicopter from Buckingham Palace. However, it meant that the Royal Motorcade had the chance to drive through the picturesque paddocks and stable yards. <laughs> Fortunately, the rain held off for the rest of the morning, enabling His Majesty King Khaled to sit at the edge of the stallion ring. The first of the four prize stallions to be paraded was Star Appeal. <laughs> His Majesty King Khaled sat next to Prince Sultan and the National Stud Director, Michael Bramwell, was able to tell the royal party about the pedigree and history of each horse in turn. Grundy, a former derby winner, was excited by the wind as he walked round the ring. It is a rare opportunity to see the four resident stallions, whose breeding all originally came from one of three Arab stallions. This horse, Blakeney, is owned partly by the National Stud and partly by a syndicate. Syndication means that ownership is divided into 40 equal shares. The shares may be bought and sold, and ownership entitles each shareholder to send one mare annually to be served by the stallion. During the 17th century, about 40 imported Arab stallions were crossed with British mares. Three lines have survived, which means that each thoroughbred has descended directly from one of the three stallions originally imported, the Bayerly Turk, Dali Arabian and Godolphin Barb. The most famous of all the resident stallions is Mill Reef, who won his reputation both on the race course and at stud. He has sired winners of the English, Irish, French and Italian derbies and is directly descended from Dali Arabian. His Majesty King Khaled and the Royal Saudi Arabian delegation were then to attend a luncheon at the Jockey Club in Newmarket. The Jockey Club, which dates back to 1750, is the governing body of horse racing in Britain. It is responsible for the administration of race meetings, including the enforcement of rules and the licensing of jockeys and trainers.
The Jockey Club is in Newmarket, just a short drive away. After the luncheon given by the stewards of the Jockey Club, King Khaled and the Royal Saudi delegation would return to London to host a banquet at Claridge's. The flags of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Great Britain flying alongside each other are symbolic of the friendship between the two nations. The warmth of feeling was also expressed by the crowds who waited for His Majesty King Khaled's arrival at Claridge's. The farewell banquet on the last night of the state visit was in honour of the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, was also invited. One important member of the Saudi Arabian royal family, though, had not been present throughout the visit, Prince Saud, the foreign minister. Instead, he had to attend a meeting of Arab ministers in Baghdad to discuss the Israeli bombing of Iraq's nuclear reactor. It was this topic that His Majesty King Khaled and the British Prime Minister, Mrs. Thatcher, had discussed at length on the second day of the visit. <laughs> Mrs. Thatcher and her husband were amongst the principal guests at the banquet at Claridge's. By this time, the Prime Minister had built up excellent relations with His Majesty King Khaled both sharing a deep concern for world peace. Saudi Arabia hopes that with Britain holding the presidency of the European Economic Community, the European powers will be encouraged to take a more militant line on the need to involve the PLO in any peace formula. <laughs> Meanwhile, more royal guests were arriving at carriages. Princess Alexandra, shortly followed by the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. It was a truly marvellous spectacle for all the people of London who lined the pavements waiting to catch a glimpse of the numerous members of the British royal family and eminent politicians in the government. The Queen Mother is a particularly popular member of the royal family and she was given a very warm welcome. Finally, the most important guests for the evening arrive at Claridge's. As Queen Elizabeth II and her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, arrived, His Majesty King Khaled, as host, was at the entrance to greet his guests. Also in the royal party was Prince Charles, the heir to the throne, and his bride-to-be, Lady Diana Spencer. Claridge's is one of London's most famous hotels. It has long been patronised by members of the British aristocracy and visiting royalty and heads of state. It takes its name from William Claridge, who owned a smaller hotel on the same site. The present building dates from 1898 and includes several royal suites. Many of the banquets given by visiting heads of state for the Queen and members of the royal family are held here.
both the Duke of Edinburgh and Queen Elizabeth have a very high regard for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which was strengthened during their visit in 1979. His Majesty King Khaled prepares to leave Buckingham Palace before flying to Geneva at the end of the highly successful state visit. The Queen was delighted to have provided the finest of British hospitality to an eminent world leader, a king whose country she has praised for its constructive and moderating influence on international affairs. The Queen's final wish is that a close relationship between their two countries will contribute to a lasting peace in the Middle East. For His Majesty King Khaled, the most substantive political talks had been with Mrs. Thatcher. Both leaders had described the attack on the Iraqi nuclear plant as an outrage. It has now become even more essential for the European economic community to develop a strategy for a Middle East settlement. It is also important that Britain should press the United States of America to accept the principle of self-determination for the Palestinians and the objective of a national homeland. His Majesty King Khaled's private Boeing 747 waits on the tarmac as the royal delegation bids a final farewell on the airport apron. Chamberlain had been given the honor of attending His Majesty King Khaled for the airport departure. It was a quiet event when compared to the preceding 72 hours of pomp and pageantry, ceremony and hospitality truly worthy of the ruler of Saudi Arabia, a king who is respected the world over for his vision and initiative. Two qualities which have meant that Saudi Arabia is quickly moving to become the most modern, innovative state in the world, whilst keeping the essential religious traditions of Islam. For Britain, the end of the state visit marked a further cementing of the close and deep-rooted relations she has had since the founding of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia.